George Kilpatrick, new inspiration for the nation, celebrating the positive achievements of African Americans from all walks of life, people that we feel good about. And we're so glad that you could join us once again on the program to celebrate success, to celebrate achievements, to put us in a position to win. This is about winning, ladies and gentlemen, and we have the blueprint for your success, the touchdown for your victories. And we got a young man here right now that's going to help us with those issues. We're pleased to be joined by four-time NFL Pro Bowler, quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles, the Minnesota Vikings, the Dallas Cowboys. And yes, he made a stop in Baltimore too for a minute, but he's also a pastor, a mentor, a family man, a husband, and a friend. And he's joining us now. We bring to you none other than Mr. Randall Cunningham. He is the author of Lay It Down, How Letting Go Brings Out Your Best. And we're so pleased to have him join us on New Inspiration for the Nation. Randall Cunningham, welcome to the program. Oh, thank you, George. What a blessing it is to be uh, with you this morning all over. Hallelujah. Well, praise God, right? Let's go. <laughs> well, let me ask you, first of all, you know, uh, thank you for writing this book and thank you for sharing your journey, your pain, your healing, your ups, your downs and your victories, because uh, oftentimes um, we don't hear we, we often don't see that side of an athlete. Right. You what you're supposed to do is go out, win those games. And when you don't win those games, you're a bum. Right. But you're showing us in the book that there's a humanity that we don't see. And and, and so uh, I'm glad that you, we have this opportunity to talk to you. Let's talk about, though, why you felt there was time to tell your story. Well, I think the reason uh, for writing this book was just to really get in touch with people and to be, a, to be an influence to people. You know, we're supposed to go into all the earth and share the good news. And, you know, even here in Las Vegas, Nevada, a lot of people go through a lot of different things. And I really believe that it was time for me to open up and begin to share things with people to be able to not only minister to them, but to, to relate to them and to let them know that every once in a while everybody goes through something and, and to be able to talk to them and to share the experiences that I've gone through and to share a bit of my testimony about life and, and how difficult things can be at times, it, I think it's important to, to get the story out, and it's been a blessing from what I've been told. How did you become a pastor? How'd um. You know, I was, I was, I was, uh, it was prophesied to me when I was young that I would be one who would be a pastor. And I was like, you know, I was so young. I was like, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. That's not what I want to do. You know, I wanted to play football. But uh, that was probably at about, I don't know, seven years old, eight years old. And then finally, as I was uh, growing up, people began to disciple me. I talked uh, about the, the late Reggie White, who influenced me when I was in Philadelphia playing with the Eagles, big six foot five and a half. 340 pound man came up to me and, and, and challenged me in my life and you know wanted me to get my life right and said if you're a Christian you better live the life and you know I was a young 23 year old kid you know I was trying to find out who I was and along the way we ended up I, I went back to Vegas and one of my friends wanted to start a Bible study where he and I would just study together and I was kind of excited about that next thing you know he said yeah you're going to teach it and I said why am I teaching he says you know more than me so I started teaching a Bible study. My pastor comes along and, and, and begins to just support everything that we're doing. We weren't trying to become a church or anything like that. Finally, we get about 50 people, and he says, Randall, that's not a Bible study. It's a church. And he says, well, we have to get you ordained. And I'm looking around I'm like, who is he talking to? And sure enough, about about seven or eight years ago, I was ordained as a, uh, a pastor, teacher, evangelist. And uh, our church has now grown Remnant Ministries. Remnant Ministries. Uh, here, yep, Remnant Ministries here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We've grown to 1,100, 1,200 people. Wow. It's been great. And, yeah. and, and, and it is a blessing. And one of the things that I didn't know about you at, during your playing career, you write about this in the book, how at, there are different points when you would have a little session. You'd say Reggie White was an influence uh, to you before he moved, before yeah. he went to Green Bay, obviously. But yeah. you, you talked about uh, him being an influence. And then when you would go to other teams, you were influenced. Didn't know that side of you as a player. 
Yeah, you know, Reggie began to disciple me. Yes, I did. I grew up in the church, but like most of us, we try to find our way, and we, we kind of go and don't go to church, and we forsake the assembly together, the brethren. And and God drew me back. You know, that's that scripture about treading up a child in the way he should go, that when he grows old, he will not depart from it. Uh, it was activated in my life, you know, because I had gone and wanted to just find out who I was. But through Reggie and through other people in Philadelphia who were letting their light so shine, uh, before men, that, that, that God would be glorified. Um, you know, I came into the fold, and people continue to pour into my life. It was a divine plan by God. And uh, I, I'm so grateful because I, I understand the story. I share the story about the love of Christ. And uh, I thank God that he's helped me to get through the hardship of even losing uh, a little two-and-a-half-year-old boy a few years back, Christian, uh, who, who drowned. And uh, I even share about that in the book. And I share in the book, it's called Lay It Down. Uh, I share about the experience of uh, what I had to go through, what my family went through, and, uh, you know, what our community and our church went through, um, through the loss of a child. And I share in a way that will help people. You, you, you do share in a way that will help people. Randall, I'm going to ask you to share some of that. We're talking with Randall Cunningham, author of Lay It Down, How Letting Go Brings Out Your Best. And... Uh, the most difficult thing for any parent to have to de- to do is to lay down the, a child, and you had to do that. Um, bring us to those moments. Yeah, you know, it's one thing for a person to have issues in life and to lay down bad habits or to lay down uh, uh, um, a relationship with uh, someone, but to 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 uh, to to let a child go. From your from your existence in the physical is is a very very difficult thing and the the thing that I do in the book is as I take the story in the beginning and I share it in a way where anybody who's lost a loved one whether it was 25 years ago 30 years ago and they've still been mourning until this day I show them and give them a solution on how to to move forward without being bitter without questioning God and saying why. Um, without being angry at uh, whoever it was that might have been involved in a death or, or something like that. And I really shared in a way of strength, and, and, and only God could, could bring me through that. So I talk about the experience of, of being in a, in a place of walking, uh, according to that, uh, that poem, Footprints, yeah. when... You know, you're walking and you see two sets of footprints and you're doing good because you know God's walking with you. But at the same time, you see that one set of footprints and and that's where our questions begin to come out. You know, we say, well, 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 God, you know, why weren't you there in the difficult time? And God is saying, no, I was carrying you at that point in time. I I actually, my family, we went through that. Yeah. And, And I tell people how to notice how sovereign God is and how to be grateful in the midst of tribulation. And not only that, but this this book is for people, uh, uh, women who are who are who are single, uh, uh, women who have been married and had kids or have children, and they're trying to raise up children on their own without a husband. And uh, and I share about the experience that you know I have and the responsibility I have in the community and at a church of where we raise up men to do that. You, we you... have a lot of single parenting family sure. homes, sure. and I talk about that as well and how we raise up men who will be effective in helping these young boys and helping the, uh, the daughters to grow up and, and that we love them and we support them and their, their our church members, we support them in their sports and in their recitals and, and all the things, and, and that's how we're raising up our, our people in our church to be community-oriented. You, you talk about uh, George Kirkpatrick, New Inspiration for the Nation with Randall Cunningham, uh, pastor of Remnant, in the, min, Remnant Ministries, also uh Biggest uh, career, uh, probably most notable, noted for his uh, career with the Philadelphia Eagles, but had one of his best years with the Minnesota Vikings. And I wonder as you talk yes. about losing uh, Christian and how much uh, your freshman year at UNLV and and yeah. and and what and and the the triple, uh, uh, I want to say the triple. Uh, tragedies, if you will, uh, that you've had to endure that way. How much do you think that that prepared you for that moment, or is it? Uh, can you compare it at all? And I'm talking about mom, dad, and a friend in that year. Well, 
George, as you mentioned, my first year of college, I lost my mother in 1981. My second year, uh, my father passed away in 1982. So we had back-to-back uh, sessions where we had to go home and, 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 and let go of our parents. My brother and I were both at UNLV. Uh, this is Bruce, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then to turn around and to, to lose a friend and then to turn around and years and years later to, to lose a little boy. I speak about that in, in my book, in my book, Lay It Down. And I draw the correlation of, of how, you know, there's nothing like losing a mother. Yeah. And then to lose a father is hard. But, but to turn around and lose a, a, a child is a very, very difficult thing. And, and, and even in the midst of it, we try to point the finger at ourselves. And we try to say, I wasn't there, or I, I didn't do enough, or, you know. But part of laying things down, and one of the things that I did share is that when we were in the hospital, there came a point in time when we were holding our child, mm. and he was in our arms, and he was already, you know, he had already gone to be with the Father. His spirit was, had already gone to be with the Father in heaven. And I had to lay my son on the bed and walk away. Mm. And, you know, that's, that's not an easy thing, and people have had to do that, and they need to be healed of that. Yeah. But there are many people not only facing things like that. Maybe uh, you're a person who's listening right now, and, and you're a person who you, you, you've been in this recession, and you've lost your job, you've been divorced from a family, uh, your family's somewhere else, and, and, and you're just trying to keep communication, you lost your job, but this book deals with helping a lot of people, and it, it really lets people know that tomorrow does not have to look dim, and that we do have a bright future. The Bible tells us that God says in the book of Jeremiah that he knows the plans that he has for us, plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give us hope and a future. And, and if that's God's will for our life, we need to accept that, and we need to know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and that we're not going down a dark tunnel where everything is going to be bad, but that we serve a good God, and uh, we can keep our heads high, and we can know that there is a bright Let me ask you this about, um, you, you talked about healing. How has the book uh, influenced you, the book you wrote since you wrote it and have read it. How has it influenced your life? The first time that I read through it as we were um, writing it, I was kind of just correcting things and straightening things and setting the record right on certain things, you know, because I am the author of the book. Right. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the writer had to really get to know me. Write it with, with Tim Willard, so, you wrote it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So by the time I read the, the pre-copy and then I read the final copy, I was sitting there in tears and I was laughing, you know, and I was going, wow, I said that? I forgot that I said that. Yeah. And you know what? It's helped to help me to mature as a person. The book has helped me to get through some of the things that I've gone through in my life. And the book has also taught me, Randall, life has been good for you. Yeah. So continue to be thankful. And so it's really, it's really helped me to mature as a person. It's helped me to, to, to become a better pastor. It's helped me also to become even more gentler, gentler and kinder uh, in society. Why is that? Because you start to see your own reflections. Like when you're, when you're in the process of doing something, sometimes you don't see the, the, the benefit of it in that moment. And then when you have time to sit back and reflect, is it because you've had a chance to sit and reflect and really go deeper than even you yeah, could imagine? Is. Yeah, it is. It's one thing for me to sit there and make corrections and right. to be, uh, you know, going through it with a fine tooth comb. It's another thing to sit there and it's done and to get ministered to. <laughs> I mean, the book ministered to me. And, and it really opened my mind even further to say, Randall, you're doing good, you're helping people, and I've got you right where I want you. Yeah. And that, that, that really has opened my eyes to remind me that I am uh, uh, a person in the, in, in the community who's a leader, a person in the community who people look up to, and, and a person who, who has faults, who has shortcomings, and that I'm not perfect, but we're continuing to, to perfect our lives. We're becoming perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. And I only just in, in, invite everybody in Las Vegas to go and grab the book. Go online, uh, get the book, you can download the book. You can have it shipped to you. I'll sign it. Come over to the church. I'll sign it for you. 
you know, I'd be glad to, to, to well, get, uh, autograph the book for you. So just, I'd, I'd really like people to support the book, and it will really help families out. As a matter of fact, I should tell people that, oh, there's a, there's a lot more things I got to get to in the time we have, and we're going to make this work, Randall. So here, here's, here's the deal. Talking with Randall Cunningham on George Kilpatrick, New Inspiration for the Nation. His book is called Lay It Down, How Letting Go Brings Out Your Best. And you talked about what you've learned. So part of it is, I think, that you, hit your mid, you had your midlife crisis, right? You're 50 years old. So part of it, Randall, could be that you're now at a point of reflection in your life and you're looking back on some of the things that you said that you have, you had to overcome. For example, you talk about your drive for success and how you had to release that in order for the blessings to come in your life. Now, I want to challenge you on that because I would argue that that drive for success is what puts you in a position to do the things that you did. But yet, you said you had to release that to be successful. So help me out, brother. Well, you know, I um, talked in the book about how I train kids to become successful. Yeah. And I tell them that the sky is the limit. Yeah. I teach them angles on how you become better than your opponent. And how is that? And Go ahead. The, the drive in life is, is you can't be a negative thinker. Mm. Uh, you know, when you hit a bump in the road, you can't immediately see, say, I, I told you so I was not going to be good or I'm not, this is not what I do. No, because the, the old saying is, is that quitters never win and winners never quit. I've always set goals. I've always had visions of, of doing great things. God, the Bible says God places the desires inside of us. He gives yes. us the desires of our hearts, the Bible says. And I know that when I'm doing something that's uplifting and something that's going to impact people's lives, in a positive way, I believe it's of God. Yeah, but let me ask you, mm-hmm. why would you say that you have to release your drive for success when it's that very drive mm-hmm. with the God, with the blessing that gets you to the point that you want to be? Why do you say you have to release that? No, I don't, I don't really say I have to release my drive for success. I've never released my drive for success. What I say is I have to lay things down. When things are out of my control, uh-huh. uh, for, instance, for instance, losing my son, Mm-hmm. I could go through the rest of my life angry and mad yep, yep. at life mm-hmm. and saying, why wasn't I there for my... Those are the things that I say we have to re- lay down, we have to release, mm-hmm. you know, because it was God's divine plan. And, 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 and what I really share is I share how to look at different scenarios in life. For instance, wait, 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 I can come home yeah. and be upset because maybe... Uh, somebody did something wrong. Or I could say, you know what, God? You are sovereign, and you're, you're in control of everything anyway. And in the book of Ecclesiastes, I just read something yesterday that talks about God does things His way, and we shouldn't get upset when He does things. And that really ministered to me, and uh, it really showed me that when God is in control, we have to be content with the things that He does in our lives. I will and if we're not content, yeah, if we're not content, and those are the things that I'm talking about, you got to let down. All right, hold on. Though. Lay them but, down. But hold on to a second. Let me, I'm going to page 18 now, brother. Here we go. Here's what you say. When my faith began to grow, I released the things that used to be important to me, the drive for success and the desire to do whatever I wanted to do at my own leisure, something that simply isn't possible if you wanted to make it as a new dad. As I released those things, I could see myself growing as a man. Yes, I was a professional athlete, but as my career neared completion, I transitioned into being a new father, a better husband, and a community leader who lived in the community. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. So that's where. Oh, yeah, you're talking. See, that was, yeah, that was talking about my faith in okay. God. Okay, okay. And uh, you, have to, you have to read more. But, yeah, that deals with my faith. All right. Because in life, when I try to do something, like I said, that's not of God. All right. It's not gonna, It's not going to work. All right, now. And so if I'm going after something, I'm chasing something more, it becomes an idol to me. Mm-hmm. That thing God is not pleased with. Yes. And so that drive, you have to drop and you got to lay down. Okay. So I just want to, make, I want, to, want to clarify that because I know I read it. I want to make yeah. sure that we can. Yeah. So, so you talk. Yeah, there's, more, there's, there's a little more substance than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let me, let me, this, this is going to be our lightning round, Randall, as we get 
close right here, right? So here's the okay, lightning round. So, so you 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 relocated to Las Vegas, right? And so being in yeah. Vegas, right? Why did you choose Vegas, and what is it about that community that people across the country don't understand that you find the love in? Well, I tell you what, I chose I chose Boca Raton, I chose Beverly Hills, I chose Santa Barbara, California, and God said, "Go, no, rather I want you in Las Vegas." So it was him planting me here, and uh, there's there's a need uh, for the gospel to get spread, and there's a need for strong leadership, and I, I'm praying that I can can be that uh, in my sector over here. You know, you a lot of people uh, quickly. You talk about uh, some of the principles of success, and one of them you talk about is friction, uh, training your children to be mentally tough, because at the end of the day, that's those it's the decisions that they have to make in critical moments uh, that will determine their character. But friction is also basically saying that sometimes you have to go against the expectations. Yeah, you know what I do is I, I train a lot of track and field athletes here in Las Vegas, Nevada, because, and I'm so thankful because most of them are, are state champions and yes. they're, they're, they're leading the state. And the team, the Nevada Gazelles, has grown this year. We're getting ready to go into a serious season. Um, but, yeah, I train them. And I teach them that they have to go against the grain. Like I said, when you think negative, you have to shift that thinking and mm -hmm. begin to think positive. In fact, we're talking with Randall Cunningham. The name of the book is called Lay It Down. Mm -hmm. And uh, Worthy Publishing, uh, it's a book I highly recommend. And I do have to ask you some sports questions. Okay, you ready? One, yeah, that's fine. it's written that you changed the game. Do you feel you changed the game? That you were one of the keys in changing how the position of quarterback is played today? <laughs> George, I've been asked that question so many times. I know that's right. I, I, to, to this day, I still don't think I've answered it right. All right, so hey, well, here I you go. Tell you this. I went out there. I enjoyed myself. I had fun. I did what came natural to me. I used my God-given abilities to go out there. Some people want to say, Randall, you influenced the position of quarterback, and now you've opened the door for many people uh, who wouldn't normally have the opportunity to play quarterback to play quarterback. Colin Kaepernick has just done an excellent job in the Super Bowl. RG3 has done an excellent job. Cam Newton's coming around the corner. Uh, Luck over at Indianapolis has, has been implanted. He's a scrambling running quarterback, and he's a guy who also can sit in the pocket. Um, have I influenced kid? Um, you know, you really got to ask that question to those kids. Kaepernick would say, hey, I've studied Randall's film. Uh, uh, RG3 has, has said, yeah, I, I, I've, I've looked at Randall's film, and I've talked to uh, RG3 on the phone and encouraged him, and I just want to continue to be an encouragement to people and influence people. Question. Um, I know Randall Cunningham the second, or they like to say RC2, uh, playing yeah. quarterback as well as track. I understand that there are yeah. a lot of teams looking at him. Let me do this. Is Syracuse University on the map, Dad? Let's make let's make let's let's hear it. Yeah, George, George Syracuse has offered Randall full ride scholarship in football, and I'm really really grateful. They have an excellent coaching staff there, and they are one of the teams that my son is considering uh, attending and accepting a scholarship from. Uh, Baylor is another uh, team, uh, uh, Baylor University. LSU with Les Miles has offered him as well. Um, Utah uh, coach uh, Erickson from uh, Miami is at the, at the University of Utah as the offensive coordinator. Uh, they've offered him a full ride scholarship. UCLA uh, offered him. Mike Maynard offered him a full ride uh, to run track at UNLV. And uh, just this last weekend on Saturday, uh, Randall uh, the second he ran uh, in, uh, at the Mount Sac relays and went seven feet three and became the number one jumper in America in high school and. Um, he's doing great. I think he's number number 15 or 20 uh, in America as far as kids that can go to the Olympics or, or, or athletes that can go to the Olympics. He went 7 feet 3 and set the meet record at Mount Sac. So it's really a blessing. And uh, my daughter Vashti is doing very well. She's gone 5'10". She's number 4 in America, and she's only a freshman. Uh -huh. So she's really doing great. And uh, I'm thankful that I get to coach them. God has really blessed me uh, to be able to coach these kids. And you, and in fact, you tell your kids to aim eight inches above, like to exceed the requirement so that doing the minimum comes natural to them, uh, is, is, is basically I'm paraphrasing that uh, to, 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 to say uh, that, you know, this is good. Um, uh, so um, 
we need to let me just put the plug in for Syracuse. The Orange needs some RC two up in here. Up in <laughs> yeah, here. that's right. <laughs> I just, as a Syracuse cool. alum, I feel my obligation. And you know we gonna you know what we yeah. gonna do? I'm gonna send Floyd Little after you, man, so that we could get this yeah, done. Yeah, uh, trust me, I've already talked to him. <laughs> <laughs> he's a great man. He's doing an excellent job over there. Yes, he really is. A uh, couple other quick uh, quick things. Um, this notion of gays in the NFL and the you know whether or not this um whether professional athletes would tolerate someone of same sex in the league what do you think well you know that's that's a very sensitive issue and i'm not going to run away from it um I, i'm simply like this i didn't create mankind mm-hmm. uh, therefore i'm not the creator mm-hmm. so we really have to go by the rules of the creator and and then that's for everyone that believes in the creator and the Bible tells him he created them male and female, mm-hmm. and it's very simple. Uh, it's his law, and being a pastor, that's what I preach. Mm-hmm. You know, God uh, made Eve for Adam. So um, as far as players in the NFL, it's gonna, gonna, these people have their own opinions. They're going to do whatever they think. And uh, uh, I'm sure that while I was playing, there could have been possibly been a person or, or two on our team, but I didn't discriminate them. I would minister to them if I found out anything. But, you know, the facts are is, you know, people are going to do what they do. And, and, and they have a judge, and the judge is going to be God. He is the creator. So it's it's really going to be between God and them, and they need to uh, make the decision themselves. UNLV looking to build a new uh, football stadium, uh, but the program has not been all that it can be. I guess that's an understatement, yeah. right? Uh, so what's your hopes for the uh, UNLV uh, football program and their hopes for the new football stadium, should it ever get to be? Well, I, I hope that Las Vegas gets the stadium uh, and turns things around with our football team. Uh, we've got a great community here, and the people want to be involved. The people who have the finances, they want to be involved, the influential people. But it's going to take really the right uh, decisions being made here in the Las Vegas Valley. And then it'll happen. All right. Randall Cunningham has been and I so appreciate ch- you, George, so much for, for allowing me to push my book and, and for you you've done your research. You're an excellent man of God. Keep it up, brother. Thank you very much. Randall Cunningham, lay it down. How Letting Go Brings Out Your Best, published by Worthy Publishing. Listen, this is a book that's going to help you in every way. I see this as something that you can even have in your study groups, whatever you are, whatever you're doing. Yes. Randall Cunningham, a gentleman and a scholar. Thank you so much. And we appreciate your time here on New Inspiration for the Nation. All right. George Kilpatrick, New Inspiration for the Nation, is brought to you by Kilpatrick Media and Marketing. If you want more information, go to my blog, newinspirationforthenation.com. New Inspiration for the Nation is brought to you by the African American Public Radio Consortium. Support for the consortium is provided by NPR, whose distribution division manages the public radio satellite system.